Welcome back. This is Bob, better known as BAR549 from Dutalk.com, the world's largest Skidoo uh, snowmobile forum. If you're not aware of it, I encourage you to sign on. There's a lot of great people on there. Uh, this is the third episode. The first two episodes we did on the E-Drive 2, uh, basically for the 900 uh, with some 1200 information. Uh, today we're doing the, the uh, QRS short shaft. Uh, which is found on your 900s uh, from 214 to 218. And uh, it's just like the long shaft ones, but uh, this one's not pressed on the shaft, so it comes off fairly easy. So we're going to cover, you want to get a pencil and paper, because we're going to give you some information on springs and um, things like that, and, and uh, tear down and assembly and set up of this secondary clutch that goes along with the primary. I'm going to adjust the camera and we're going to get right into the teardown. Okay, we've got the clutch off the sled apparently here, obviously. Uh, we're going to spin this off. We've got this loosened right up. It's going to be uh, right hand turn uh, because it's left hand threads to get it off. Uh, we've got the uh, screw loosened up uh, most of the way. Uh, we're going to take this off. Uh, no need for the compressor at this point uh, uh, because the bolts are still in the back holding the helix in and we'll get to that in just a minute. But we've got to get this threaded up so far and then we're going to have, don't like to do it this way, but we got to pop it off with a screwdriver here, pry it apart a little bit. And some of these are a little more difficult than others to do that with. So bear with me here. This is not cooperating this morning. There we go. And that piece is off. Now there is a recess in this. The recess goes down. Okay. You can see that recess, there's no threads. The other side, it's threaded. So the recess goes down. Okay, then you've got your little uh, washer here. Um, that's a friction washer, okay? So now, uh, you wanna put some tape, tape on these threads to protect the bushing in the helix when you take it out and install it. So you don't need a lot of tape but uh, you're going to want to tape around it so that you protect the threads or uh, not the threads but uh, you're going to protect the bushing material as it's coming up out of there okay all right now in the back here you got these four bolts right here um, first time out they can be a little difficult you may want to put a little heat on them uh, or get an impact driver and hit them, but uh, I found out lately a lot of them come out fairly easy. So it's a T40, yep, it's a T40, and we're just going to take these four bolts out, or loosen them up, I should say. Don't want to take them all out because you got to put the spring compressor or the compressor on there so the helix doesn't come flying out. Now there's a couple ways, and I'll show you that you can do this. Um, hopefully I can get in there and do that. I got another tool I can use to get in there. All right, so Again, the tools come from CNT Power Sports. Chris is a sponsor on the site, so you're going to use that uh, compressor again. I've got my special adapter on here, but his does come with an adapter. I've just, like I've stated before, I've modified that one for another use, and so I use this one. And so I just like to loosen the bolts up first before I do anything. So now you can crank this down, okay? And one other thing you want to do, so if I can find my marker now, is you want to make notation of, you got an arrow here, you got an arrow here, 
They don't line up perfectly and never will. And then you've got an arrow on the back side. Right there. Okay. And then something you want to take a look at currently is where the spring is in the helix. And it's right here on 18. Okay. So we want to note that if you want to get it back in the same location and get the same tension. So, all right, we've got it compressed. Now I've got this other tool um, I can take them out with. Hate to bore you with all this, but I'm going to do it. These bolts can be replaced. Chris sells a bolt kit. Uh, it's hex head so that you can uh, take them out a little easier in the sled if you need to. Um, or if you repeatedly change them. If not, these bolts work very well. You just clean them up, put 242 Loctite on them, and away you go. Okay? And these have been out before, so they've come out pretty easy. And um, we'll cover the helix here in a minute. Now something I, uh, if you follow my forum, I've reused springs over the years uh, after a season of use. After further use and many years of running, um, and that I highly recommend that you replace at least the secondary spring in the QRS every year, and um, especially on the torsion. And I prefer the torsion spring. I just think it's a much better working clutch for back shift. You don't get the clog. It doesn't. Uh, isn't doesn't have the uh, the wear and the abuse on your rollers uh, like a, a compression spring does and like I say the big reason I like it is the back shift I, I get a superior back shift with compression springs and they are adjustable that's an or I mean with a torsion spring uh, the compression springs are not adjustable. You have to use a different spring. If you want to change things with a compression sp or uh, with a torsion spring, you can change the tension on it and get different results from it. So, okay. So we've got that. Now you can um, uh, do this a couple different ways. I get a strap wrench. Okay, and. You can hold this with your waist here and back it off. Get the tension off it so you comb up. Or I've got this modified tool that I've made from another clutch tool. And it fits on there and it just, just works a little easier for me. I get it set on there right. And I just pull them together. And I can just back this off. Okay. And just that simple. Back it off. Okay. Now you want to be careful in taking this apart because you want to see where the spring is setting down in the bottom of the clutch in the sheave. Now you see why this shaft is so long on this installer because with this it's it's pretty close to the top. You don't have a lot of threads left when you take it off. So okay so like I said just hold reach in there hold hold the spring down because you've already got it marked here where it was on the helix originally if you want to get it back in the same spot and pull your helix out okay now the spring I'm gonna mark it here real quick so I don't lose it and I'll show you where it's at there's anywhere from one to three holes happens to be in the single hole in the bottom here. I'll take it off of here so you can get a better look. The single hole right in the bottom. Now back over here you've got two holes you can do other adjustments with but to put this back where we had it uh, and get the same tension 
uh, which we want to do, uh, that tells me where it was and what we can get it set back to. And then, like I say, that tape on there protects this bushing when you slide it up and down, taking this off of here, okay? Now, Skidoo marks their helix on the outside here, and this one happens to be a 4740, and that's what comes stock in the stock uh, uh, 900, it's a 4740 helix, and that's a very good helix. And I'll cover a little bit more on that when I clean this up and put it back together, okay? Now we're not going to replace the rollers. When we got the secondary shaft, we're going to measure the bushings in that uh, when we get ready to put it together. And then uh, we got the rollers in here. Now the rollers, you got these bolts holding them in, okay? These rollers from Skidoo, I highly recommend you use those. They're very durable uh, and they last a long, long time. Now if you've got to replace them, uh, you run into a little problem here. There's a pin in them and uh, it makes it a little difficult. Now what they've done is they've gone through and they've drilled these all the way through now. On the early ones they weren't drilled through. You can see they're drilled through all the way through, okay? So now you can get a little punch and you can punch those out and then take the bolt out, okay? Um, and, and, but, and then when you go back together, you, if you're using the same bolts, or if you're that, if you're gonna take it apart, you might as well get new bolts, but I would, I do not use the pins. I just use blue, lock, blue Loctite 242 to put it back together and run the bolt in, snug it down, and she's good to go. Never had one loosen up or come apart. But uh, the rollers, uh, as long as they're round and they look good, no uneven wear, not a lot of slop, just go ahead and run them, okay? All right, this is uh, going to end this part of the video, and uh, I'm going to clean it up, and in part four, I'm going to assemble this and going to show you how to set the tension on the sled. So we'll be back in a little bit.